In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, welcome to the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy. We focus now on our Lord and we worship at Mass. Today we have a beautiful memorial of a martyr bishop, apostle to Germany, as he is known, St. Boniface, died in, I think, 754 AD. He was martyred as he was preparing to confirm converts. He was martyred by pagans. He was Benedictine, founded the abbey in Fulda. Very powerful. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the martyr Saint Boniface be our advocate, O Lord, that we may firmly hold the faith he taught with his lips and sealed in his blood, and confidently profess it by our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Tobit. I, Tobit, have walked all the days of my life on the paths of truth and righteousness. I performed many, many charitable works for my kinsmen and my people, who had been deported with me to Nineveh and Assyria. On our, festi on our festival of Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, a fine dinner was prepared for me, and I reclined to eat. The table was set for me, and when and when many different dishes were placed before me, I said to my son, Tobiah, my son, go out and try to find a poor man from among our kinsmen exiled here in Nineveh. If he is a sincere worshiper of God, bring him back with you so that he can share this meal with me. Indeed, son, I shall wait for you to come back. Tobiah went out to look for some poor kinsman of ours. When he returned, he exclaimed, Father, I said to him, what is it, my son? He answered, Father, one of our people has been murdered. His body lies in the marketplace where he was just strangled. I sprang to my feet, leaving the dinner untouched, and I carried the dead man from the street and put him in one of the rooms so I might bury him after sunset. Returning to my own quarters, I washed myself and ate my food in sorrow. I was reminded of the oracle pronounced by the prophet Amos against Bethel. All your festivals shall be turned into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. And I wept. Then at sunset, I went out, dug a grave, and buried him. The neighbors mocked me, saying to one another, He is still not afraid. Once before, he was hunted down for execution because of this very thing. Yet now, 
that he has scarce, scarcely escaped. Here he is again burying the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Blessed, Blessed the man, man who fears, fears the Lord. Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Blessed, Blessed the man, man who, who fears, fears the, Lord. the Lord. His generosity shall endure forever. Light shines through the darkness for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and, and just. Blessed, Blessed the, the man, man who, fears who fears the Lord. The Lord. Well for the man who is gracious and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. He shall never be moved. The just man shall be in everlasting remembrance. Blessed, Blessed the man, man who, who fears, fears the, Lord. the Lord. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to speak to the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders in parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenant farmers and left on a journey. At the proper time, he sent a servant to the tenants to obtain from them some of the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him, beat him, and sent him away empty-handed. Again, he sent them another servant, and that one they beat over the head and treated shamefully. He sent yet another whom they killed. So too many others, some they beat, others they killed. He had one other to send, a beloved son. He sent him to them last of all, thinking they will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come, put the tenants to death, and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture passage? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. They were seeking to arrest him, but they feared the crowd, for they realized that he had addressed the parable to them. So they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you look at this beginning reading, beautiful book, the book of Tobit. This is Tobit, and his life is such a beautiful, righteous life. He says, I, Tobit, have walked all the days of my life on the paths of truth and righteousness. And now that he is exiled in a different country, right? He's in Nineveh. He's in Assyria. They've been exiled, and he's still doing righteous works. He has a meal set before him, and then they see he sees one of his kinsmen who's been strangled to death, and he leaves his meal before eating to go and get this man's body. This is respect. It's respect for the dignity of the human person. And he's mocked for doing this. In fact, 
Not only is he exiled out of his country among a Gentile people, but he's also been threatened with execution for having done this before. It says here, the neighbors mocked me because he got up the next morning and buried this man who had been killed. And it says, the neighbors mocked me saying to one another, he is still not afraid. Once before he was hunted down for execution because of this very thing. Yet now that he has scarcely escaped, here he is again burying the dead. I mean, this shows us the, the, the heart of Tobit, this person who is made in the image and likeness of God, out of his own country, among a Gentile people, risking his own life to do something like burying the dead. It's happened before. He's been hunted down, and he's still doing this. These are the examples that we need to learn from. We want to be able to have a heart that's completely transformed, that is so in love with God that it would respect and serve another person even at the risk of losing one's life. And this is exactly what Jesus did. These tenants are the leaders of Israel. The vineyard is Israel. I read Bishop Barron today said you could think about it as the whole world and morally speaking, you could think about the vineyard as us morally as like our personhood, our soul that God is trying to tend. And look what happens. God sends prophets and people to speak on his behalf to Israel, and they're treated disrespectfully. We could do this ourselves, morally speaking. God speaks to us when we hear the scriptures, and we may not respect always the, God, the word of God. This is just the lot of our life now as a broken people. We sin. So it's not just the leaders of Israel, it's me too. I hear from the book of Isaiah, I hear from the book of Tobit. Am I willing to get up and drop my meal to do some good deed? Or do I first wanna take a few bites before I go do the good deed? In addition, above and beyond that, am I willing to risk my life to go do the good deed while still also leaving my meal off to the side? I know a beautiful story of Padre Pio that I heard, where he's Italian, he loved pasta growing up, it's just part of our culture, and somebody asked him once, would you like a nice dish of pasta? i bring it to you, he said, that would be beautiful. The person went home, I think the next day they made him the beautiful dish of pasta, brought it to him fresh, and when he got it, he said, you know what? There's, I think, somebody poor in the neighborhood, bring it to them. Did God maybe tell Padre Pio right when he said yes to the dish of pasta that it wasn't going to be for him? No. God may not have told him. God may have said, say yes, accept it. And then when the moment came, he said, there's somebody hungry in the neighborhood. Give up that dish. I wanted you to show charity to your neighbor who wanted to make you a dish, but it wasn't for you the food. That food was for my servant who has no food. Are you willing to give that up? And Padre Pio gave it up. These are, these are the examples we want to learn from. How much am I willing to respect uh, the other person? Because ultimately, God sent his own beloved son, and when they saw the son, they said, this is the heir. Let us kill him, because we want the inheritance. Kind of akin to the son, the prodigal son. It was as if to say, Father, I wish you were dead so I can have the inheritance now. But the father allowed himself to be put to death in his heart, so to speak, and that offering of his life was so beautiful that he was able to welcome his son back when his son came home and lavished him and showed what his son always should have had and went over and beyond and decked him out with amazing things, a robe and sandals and rings. You see, these are the beautiful things that God wants to do for us. Yesterday, Trinity Sunday, when I preached, I said the Father has a word from all eternity, and that word is the second person of the Trinity who took on human nature, Jesus Christ. But if I don't have the Holy Spirit, I can't hear that word. Just as if when I prepare a homily, if the word is in my mind and heart, if, you don't have, if I don't have the breath and the sound wave to get it out to you, you can't hear it. You can't hear it. 
Hence, we need the Holy Spirit to give us the capacity to hear the words of our Father so that when Jesus Christ approaches us, we don't lash out and disrespect him and kill him, but we respectfully receive him as Lord, as brother, as friend, as God. This is how we have to receive, and the Holy Spirit gives us the capacity to stand before the Son of Man when he comes, to hear what he has to say because what he is living, Jesus Christ, his life is the word of our Heavenly Father. This is what St. Boniface heard in the depths of his soul. This is why St. Boniface was willing to go to foreign nations, why St. Boniface was willing to lay down his life, because he listened. The devil makes so much noise. Our wounds clamor inside of us. But we have to have the Holy Spirit that says silence. Listen. Be still. Be still. Because the devil does not listen. A deaf people can't listen because they can't hear. But we have been healed by the wounds of Jesus. So we ask today for the Holy Spirit to shine upon us anew, to grant us hearing in the depths of our heart, to be a humble people, a trusting people, not a people who wounds other people by our blindness like Saul did, but a people who are converted in the depths of their being by the Christ, so that it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. We offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis, may God bless him with good health and vitality as he shepherds his flock. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For policymakers, may the Holy Spirit inspire in them a greater respect for all human life from conception till natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. For those who labor in the fields, may God bless and sanctify their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us gathered here and all, the, all, and all our viewers, may God bless us and help us place our trust in him so that we may be a light in this world and persevere to the end and bring many with us to heaven one day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For, for the faithful departed, may they rest in pe the peace of Christ in heaven with all the angels and saints, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of our personal intentions, for all the souls in purgatory, and for all the members of the Association of Marian Helpers, and the confraternity of the Immaculate Conception, both living and deceased, and for all the intentions they have entrusted to us, as well as all those who call a right to us, may the Lord favorably hear their prayers and strengthen them in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray, and by your grace. May we be set afire with that flame of your love through which St. Boniface overcame every bodily torment through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle the victory is yours, through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
when we receive Holy Communion today, whether here physically or by live stream in spiritual communion. We really want to hear our Lord say, I love you. Mother Teresa told her sisters, she said, how could we go a day without hearing God say, I love you? How could we go one day? We're going to have Jesus Christ inside of us, the word of our Heavenly Father, and the Holy Spirit is going to give us the capacity to hear it. So we ask our Lord and Our Lady who magnifies the Lord, magnifies His voice to be able to hear clearly today. And not just today, but if it's today, the first day, beginning today, and for every day of our life to hear at least once a day, God say by name, I love you. an act of spiritual communion and thanksgiving. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, amen. And from the diary of St. Faustina, entry 1170, June 30th, 1937. Today, the Lord said to me, I have wanted to exalt this congregation many times, but I am unable to do so because of its pride. Know, my daughter, that I do not grant many, my great, that I do not grant my graces to proud souls, and I even take away from them the graces I have granted.
Jesus deeply wants to heal us. And he needs us to be capable of listening, quiet. He wants us to follow him, to not go ahead of him. He will heal us and do miraculous things in our life, but he needs us to be in the place that he is. The people came to Jesus and were in his presence and all were healed. He came to them and they were healed, but they were with him. He says, remain in me. He wants to share with us the treasures that he has from his father, from his father's house, the house he resides in. But we have to be silent. He will heal our wounds. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray. Give us that determination which made your blessed martyr Boniface faithful in your service and victorious in suffering. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Before we have the Novena prayer, we're hosting 40 hours of Eucharistic adoration before this Sunday, Feast of Corpus Christi on July, June 11th. So from the 7th to the 10th of this month, we'll have each day 10 hours of adoration. It begins at 10 a.m. in the morning until 8 p.m. in the evening. If you would like to sign up, please contact our coordinator of volunteers at volunteers at marion.org. There's also sign-up sheets in the vestibule of the shrine and at the reception desk. In the words of Venerable Fulton Sheen, these are very beautiful words. He said, the only time our Lord asked the apostles for anything was the night he went into agony. Not for activity did he plead, but for an hour of companionship. Let us keep our Lord company and find the dignity and respect he shows to us that he would want us to spend time with him. Powerful. We begin and continue our novena now, praying through the intercession of Blessed Anthony and Blessed George, our martyrs from Rosica. O oh God, merciful Father, in the heart of your servants, Anthony and George, you arouse such a great zeal for accomplishing corporal and spiritual deeds of mercy, deign to grant to us through their intercession the grace for which we implore you. The grace and capacity to hear God every day say, I love you. Most holy and undivided Trinity, you choose to live in the hearts of your faithful servants and after their death to reward their merits with the glory of heaven. Grant, we implore, that your servants, Anthony and George, who with apostolic zeal 
faithfully serve the church under the patronage of the Immaculate Virgin Mary may be numbered among the saints through Christ our Lord. Amen. In order to get to heaven, we need grace, and one of the best ways to receive that grace is through prayer. So if you would like a religious community to be praying for you every day and for you to share in the graces of those prayers, masses, rosaries, and penances, join us and become a Marian helper. Please visit micprayers.org. It takes less than 10 seconds, doesn't cost anything, but is full of many graces. God bless you.